remember, he's not going to stop at that wall. We never told him to look for the wall. So he's just going to keep walking. If he gets to you, he's going to run you over. Session girls who called. Uh, it's our pleasure to have here kids from junior kindergarten to seventh grade to learn about computer science and how to code. Hello, I'm, uh, my name is Yuan Reiko. I'm a professor at Illinois of Technology and I'm happy to be here uh, to help Daniela with, um, with these young kids to get them excited about computers. Okay, so uh, what we have here, uh, we have uh, several hundred pieces of plastic that have been assembled over many, many hours by, uh, by my kids. I'll show you guys some pictures uh, later. So I have a fifth grader and a seventh grader at home who built this uh, a few months ago. And they, uh, and they used this little robot to learn how to program. Uh, and also to participate in a science fair. Uh, the younger one, the older one was mostly helping, but the fifth grader was one who, who uh, mostly um, participated in a science fair. Now, uh, what can this little robot do? So he's actually got a lot of, um, <clears throat> he's got a lot of interesting things. So let me actually put this down for a second. And let me just explain what this uh, little robot is. So he's got, he's got a brain. So this body in the middle is actually the computer. So the brain being, a, it's a fully programmable computer. It's just like my laptop or just like your phone. So there's a computer in there with a processor, with memory, with Wi-Fi, with Bluetooth. It's got everything in there so that I can connect with my laptop to it, give it a program. What's a program? A program is a sequence of things of what he's going to do, right? So you get something like that, like a computer like that that would go into a robot? So this came as a kit. It's, it's called it's a, it's a Lego Mindstorm is the name of the, of the kit. Okay. Uh, so it's made, made by Legos. Uh, this is used all the way through high school and college. Exactly wow. this unit. Right? And you can build like cars with it. The same pieces. You can build cars, robots. It's got motors. So it's got one, two motors here. It's got another motor up here. The brain has got sensors. Th these are infrared sensors. So you can detect distance. It's got um, touch sensors. So you can, it can uh, do touch. It's got a color sensor which can detect color and light. So it's got all sorts of sensors. And I'll show you guys when, we, when I connect to the computer, you can see these sensors in real time and program against them. You can tell it, well, if you are too far from something, do something. If you're touching something, do something else. Right, it's got a speaker, it's got a microphone. You can kind of talk to it. It's all, whatever you can program it, it can do. All right? So, yeah, so this was the little robot. He's, um, and uh, the way we've, uh, and essentially what the experiment was that we were trying to get him to do was to have this big robot find the little robot. This is actually another robot, which we didn't have to build. Uh, and he, is that an Ozobot? this is an Ozobot, yes. Uh, so so these, uh, these guys can also program, and you can tell them to, for example, follow lines on, the, on a piece of paper, you can tell them to dance, all sorts of things. I didn't bring my son's iPad, which uh, he's got it all hooked up with the iPad to make him dance, but we'll make the big one dance, because I can, I can program the big one off my laptop. And we're gonna use the, the big robot is gonna look for the little robot. He had a question, go ahead. Yes. Huh? Robot? I think it looks like it was control. Um, it looks like it was built by other robots. So it looks like that one's not made of iron, but that one is. So it's kind of different. So you can lose that one. 
Actually, I could control the little one off my laptop too if I had the right program and a little bit more time. Uh, but uh, essentially, what we're going to do is we just want to do a little demo to show you how this big robot is going to use the sensor here, which is the light sensor, and he's going to look around here on its own. I'm not going to control it. He's, going to, he's got a program that I've told it to look around this area, and when he gets close like that to that little robot, he's going to stop. And he's actually going to fire these little balls out of happiness. <laughs> um, all right? Now, you guys ask, why do we have the walls? Well, Maybe so the robot can't really see everything around us, right? I mean, he's got sensors. He can kind of tell distances and all sorts of things, but he can't really understand the environment, OK? So we put the walls up so that we can give it boundaries of where he should stay. And this sensor up here is the one that will, that it can detect the distance. So we wrote a program and we said, look, when you're too close to a wall, you should stop I have a question. and turn around. Yes. Uh, is the robot going to pick up the little robot with, with the little hand? You could program it to do that. Right now, I, all I did is I, we, we tried to write the simplest program possible which where he would by himself look around this area and whenever he found the little robot he would stop right and he's going to look for like if the lights are off for example he would not find the robot but if the lights are on he would find them so he's looking for the bright light is what he's looking for is there a little camera in the robot's head that uh, there's an infrared sensor so there's a sensor that is um that is sending out um, light that is invisible to us. It's infrared, right? So we don't see this light, but it's sending out this light and it's looking back for the, re for the reflection of, of that light to, to then determine how far things are. Um, okay, so should we do a little demo and see how the robot works? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna turn them on. It's gonna take about a minute. So he's gonna he's gonna make some sounds once he's on. Until then he's starting. Uh, <clears throat> you guys know how when you turn on your computer it takes a while for it to start? I used to be in robotics. Okay. And I put one of those little motor thingies and we were programming it. Okay. So we did the same thing. I'll show you guys after we do the demo of the program of, of how we made him look around. So he just started, that was his beep. Uh, and it took him a while to start because he's a computer. It, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's the time it takes for him to load my dad, up. My dad's computer takes like five minutes for it to turn on mm -hmm. a after it ran out of battery. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's try to connect. So I'm, this is the program that I can use to talk to the, to the robot and I'm trying to look for him right now. Now that he's on, it's trying to connect. And I found him, so I've got him up here, and I'm connected. And I know you guys can't see very well, but he's actually got little sensors here. Uh, and I'll just put it up on the screen, but these sensors actually will tell me the, how, how bright the light is. It'll tell me if I'm touching the sensors, for example. It'll tell me the motors, how fast they're moving. So it tells me everything about the robot, right? It's kind of its vital signs. So now I'm going to actually go and load up a program. And let's see. We have so many programs, I'm trying to remember which one was the right one. I think it was this one, random walk and detect. And we're going to hit play. I got it. Okay. Yep. All right, so he should start now any second and then his job is going to literally be to look around and find the little robot uh oh <laughs> <laughs> it shot Phil oh. now found the this is one of the problems that we actually had here was that the bright, the light is really bright in this room. Should we turn? <gasps> Let's change So that. if you turn down the lights, then I don't have to change the program. So right, that, right. So that would be one the of lights. the things I'd have to, uh, to adapt 
Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah, so, you know, this is part of why self-driving cars, for example, are really tricky, right? Because the environments change all the time, right? You never know if it's gonna snow, it's gonna rain, it's gonna be dark or light. And making the computer be versatile, to be able to understand all of these situations is actually not easy. So, and thank you for turning down the lights. And now we're gonna try again. And let's make sure this guy's on. Probably easier to, it's easier to see light when it's dark. Yeah, so, it, so when it was so bright in here, it, it, it couldn't really tell the difference between the robot and all the bright light. And now he's walking, he should stop when he gets close to the wall. See, now, I didn't tell him to stop. The program did. There was a program in the computer that told him to, to stop. And notice that when he backs up, he's gonna spin, but he doesn't always spin the same amount. Sometimes he spins a little bit, sometimes he spins a lot. And we did that because we wanted Right. So sometimes the angle that it comes in makes it hard for him to see the wall. All right. So he's randomly looking, right? He doesn't really know where to look. He's randomly looking and at some point, if we let him run long enough, in our experiments, within two or three minutes, he would typically find the robot. So if you just have enough patience, he will find it. <laughs> yeah. Now. Uh, <laughs> he, was, he was close enough <laughs> that he found it. Oh, right. oh good job. Good job, EV3.